What's going on guys, Big Jer, back again with Warp Academy. And today, I'm excited to talk about Nectar 3. I'm gonna show you guys how to take a regular vocal and turn it into something like this. As usual, we're gonna talk about the GUI so you guys are comfortable in there, all the modules that come with Nectar 3 so you guys are familiar with using them, and my top features that help me get to this point. All right, let's get into it. All right, so today we're gonna to be looking at Nectar 3, specifically what I think are the standout features. But as usual, first, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the interface or the GUI so we all know what's going on. Then in that same section, we're gonna go ahead and do a module rundown so you guys know what each module inside of Nectar 3 does and when might be appropriate to use it. Then we're gonna see Nectar 3 in action, where I pull up that song that I sketched and we see how I use Nectar to get those results. In addition to building the preset together, checking out the modules that I used and how I use them, another thing I'd like to mention is definitely the vocal assistant. All right, let's get into it. All right, so right up at the top, we've got our plugin instance name. Now this is going to determine the name that appears in your IPC list or supported isotope plugins. You know that they all work together and this is how we can identify which instance we're using. Right next to that, we've got our vocal assistant. Okay, we'll be getting into that today. Right next to that, we've got our presets. So they've got presets in there that you could look through or you could save your own there. Right next to that, you've got your gear icon, which will get you to your options and the question mark will get you to some Nectar 3 help. Right below all that, we've got our module chain, okay? We'll be going through this a little more specifically in just a minute when I go through each module, but this is where you put them. But all modules pretty much work the same. You've got your on off button right here. You've got your solo button. This X at the bottom will get rid of your module. Your mix knob is like a wet and dry knob. And then by clicking on the word, you will get the display plus any other options available. Like I said, the X mark will remove plugins, but you can add plugins by hitting the little plus mark right there. And all the modules can be reorganized at any time in any way you want. Underneath the modules, you have a visual display of what's going on within that module and feedback from the incoming audio. Over to the right, we've got ALM, which is auto level mode. When enabled, ALM will adjust the input game in order to hit the ALM target level. We'll be using that today and I'll show you guys how to take advantage of that. Right next to that, we've got our limiter and this enables a brick wall zero latency limiter on the output signal. If we're looking at the meters below, the peak level meter is displayed in white while the RMS level is displayed in gray. Gain knobs are right here. Below that, we've got bypass, which will bypass Nectar 3. Next to that, we've got match. When Nectar 3 is bypassed and match is enabled, the bypass signal level will be adjusted to match the processed output level. Finally, we've got pan, which will adjust the signal from left to right, and width, which will adjust the amount of stereo widening. Decreasing this control results in a more narrow effect while increasing it opens up or widens the apparent stereo field. That's pretty much the GUI. Let's jump right into each of these modules now. The first module isn't really a module, it's your pitch correction section, and it actually can't be moved. It needs to be first in the chain. And it's really cool because Nectar 3 teamed up with Melodyne, giving us this time and pitch correction. And Melodyne adds truly surgical, intuitive, and truly transparent pitch adjustment capabilities to your vocals. Moving on from there, we have modules that can be rearranged in any order that you want. Let's just go in the order that they appear. We've got compressors with refined interface and interactive controls. You can actually add up to two compressors in your Nectar 3 chain. Then we've got ourselves a de-esser, something that you're going to use more than you think if you've never used a de-esser before. This controls your sibilants or your S's and really helps tame your vocal track. Next up, we've got our delay. These have two new saturation modes and independent stereo delay controls. Also, you can EQ the delayed signal. 
We've got dimension. We can modulate our vocals with chorus, flanger, or phaser modes, bringing some motion and space to your vocals. So we've got EQ. In this EQ, we can shape our tone and character pretty easily. We've got up to 24 bands per EQ and 16 filter shape options per band. We could also do dynamic EQ processing with this. Just like the compressor, you can add up to two EQs in your Nectar 3 chain. We've got a gate to help us control unwanted breaths or tails. We've got harmony, where we could add up to eight harmonic voices. These all could be easily controlled with this interface. We've got some reverb with increased control on our post filter and enhanced user interface. And finally, we've got saturation, two new saturate modes, decimate and distort. All right, I think we got a pretty good idea what's going on here, so let's see it in action. But just before we get going, I'd like to invite you to join the community by hitting the subscribe and activate notifications. That way you won't miss a beat and you'll get the heads up on all the things as soon as we post them. All right, here's that sketch that I was showing you guys earlier. I don't think we need to listen to the whole thing again, but I do want to show you what it sounded like before and after. So I want you to take notice that I am automating some stuff. So I'll start off with Nectar turned off, and then I will turn it on and you'll see the difference. I'll solo the vocals too. Here we go. Hold on, don't let go of home. We're still close. All right, so you can see how I've got some reverb in there. I've got some compression and EQ going on. I've got the delay turning on only when I want here. And then I've got some harmonies coming in only on the second half of the bridge. Okay, let's listen to that one more time and you can hear all those things that I just called out now. Hold on, don't let go of home. We're still close. And by the way, that's the very talented Meredith Bull. This song will be coming out really soon. She did a great job and I enjoy working with her. Perfect. And you saw how those harmonies actually really tied it into the music. That's why I turned that on. Let's look at what the processing is real fast and then let's build it together. Okay, so I do have the pitch going here. Not too much on the strength. I just wanted to, I mean, her pitch is good. I just wanted to gently make it that pop feel. Some EQ and this EQ is inspired by the vocal assistant. And we're gonna take a look at that in a second. We've got a de another EQ, got a compressor. And then there's that delay that comes in and out. Harmony that we built, I'll show you how to do that. And some reverb, okay, great. Let's go ahead and build this guy together down here on this one. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on, turn this off and solo this group. Okay, I'll go down and open up the Nectar 3, the new one. And let's jump right into Vocal Assistant. Actually, I should loop this section in case we run out of time. And we'll go ahead and start our Vocal Assistant up then. So yes, Vocal Assistant, Modern, let's go to Aggressive, and here we go. Hold on, don't let go of home, we're still close. Hold on, don't let go of home, we're still close. Hold on, don't let go uh, home. All right, so here's what we got. Let's just listen to it and then we'll take a gander at it. Hold on, don't let go uh, home. We're still close. All right, so not bad at all. Let's take a look at what's going on here. Let's turn pitch correction on. So this is an F minor. Okay, we'll turn correction on and we'll turn our strength back a bit. Hold on, don't let go of home. We're still close. Awesome. All right, 
Let's use a gate to maybe get some of that noise out of there. This is just a scratch track, but still, Nectar's going to give us a great sound. So let's turn our gate on and see if we can get rid of some of that junk. Oh, I don't let. There we go. So now a lot of that junk in between the words is gone, and that's exactly what a gate's going to do. So our first EQ they gave us is going to give us a bit of resonance reduction, okay? And this is something that I enjoy and want. So next up, we've got our de -esser. Let's definitely turn that on and get rid of some of that hissy noise sound that we've got in there, okay? And that's what a de -esser does. So basically, we're going to pull down the threshold and get rid of some of that junk. Oh, I don't let go of home. Oh, we're getting really close to a clean sound now. Okay, this EQ is going to just give us a nice little boost. We could decide to like that or not like that. I'll probably spend a little time dialing that in with the track if this was something I was working on. But I do want to show you this really cool thing over here. I'll pull this guy in. And what I could do is set it to follow her fundamental. Check this out. Oh, I don't let go of home. Pretty wicked, right? Oh, I don't let go of home. We're still close. All right, we're starting to really dial this in. All right, we got our first compressor. We got a few different modes here. We'll see what optical is like. We got an RMS situation happening. Might be a little aggressive. So let's let's put it on peak and let's see if we could make it sound a little bit better. Oh, I. We've already got rid of that little bit of nastiness in the front of each of those little bursts. And the reverb, you know, no big deal. I like the way they did this. Oh. You know, I will use pre-delay though. This will actually set it to delay the reverb signal. Oh. There we go, you hear that now, how she says the word and then it comes in? Oh. Which is much more desirable. And we'll give it a little saturation just for some bite. Oh. On don't let Go uh, home. This sounds a lot better. Remember what it sounded like before. We'll take advantage of our bypass button and our match button. What this does, if you remember from before, is we're going to bypass the signal, but match the volume both ways. So here we go. Oh, I don't let go of home. We're still close. I mean, completely different. The other one's got all that noise and artifacts in it. This one is clean, upfront, polished. And I even took it a step further on the other one and went ahead and dialed in a bunch of automation where I actually automated the delay to come in and then I automated the harmonies to come in. I do want to show you guys how I did those harmonies. Check this out. So we'll go into here and let's add harmony. Okay. Oh. So now we've got a bunch of these guys that we can add actually up to eight and move them all around. Plus we have a filter down here. So I can just add a little bit of filtering to it. I'm gonna say I don't want too much. I do want pitch correction set to it, but I don't want too much pitch variation. So it still sounds in tune. So here we go. Let's go ahead and kind of create something cool here. Let's maybe bring some unisons here to give it some nice chorusing effect. Oh, I don't let... Maybe I add another one and it goes an octave higher, okay? We'll do the super octave. Oh, I don't let. And I will add maybe one more and we'll do the sub octave. Oh, I don't let. And then I could choose how much I want right here. Oh, I don't let go of home. We're still close. Awesome, loving that. Right here, remember we have auto level mode and this is gonna keep the volumes between notes the same. Now we did a pretty good job already leveling out the volumes, but this will keep them exactly the same. We've got it set to a negative eight dB. Let me show you what happens if I move it down a bit. Oh, I don't let go of home. We're still close. 
tries to keep everything right at that target value and it defaults at eight and I think that's just fine. And finally, I like to engage the limiter a little bit to pull this down just to make sure we're rounding off those tops and limiting the output. Oh. So let's go ahead and hear this in the mix now. It's gonna sound pretty good. All right, guys, that about wraps it up for what I wanted to show you with Nectar 3. I hope you found it interesting and enjoyable. If you did, swing by the Warp Academy site where you guys can find out more information on Nectar 3 and find out how to get your guys' hands on it. All right, until next time, see ya.